You guys like my hat? No? Okay. What is up guys and welcome to a brand new YouTube video. So today we're gonna be making something really cool. I've been seeing some people doing it on Instagram so I figured I would try it and give you guys a really in-depth tutorial. So the people I've seen have been using real breads, real royals to make this. But you guys already know on this channel we like to ball on a budget. So we're gonna be using everyone's favorite shoe, Jordan 1 Mids. If you guys actually like mids, comment below and let me know which pairs you guys have because I don't think I know one person who likes Jordan 1 mids. But that's perfect because that means there's a lot of mids out there and that means they're way cheaper than breads and royals. So this is gonna be really budget friendly. With that being said, I will have all the products that I use in the description below. So definitely check that out if you want to. But without further ado, let's go. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna need is a template for the shape and size of our wallet. You can find a download for this template in the link in my description. So basically what we're gonna do is cut all the pieces out with some scissors and once you're done you should have two larger squares, one smaller square, and one oddly shaped square which will be a pocket. Next we're gonna grab some black leather and it's important to note that this leather is one millimeter thick so that it's thin enough for a needle to pass through easily. So we're gonna grab those same pieces we just cut out and use some tape to attach them to our leather. Once attached, you can cut away each section with scissors so that it'll be easier to slice them out individually. For more precision slicing, I'm going to be using a box cutter that needs to be very, very sharp. So I'm going to take that very sharp blade and just cut along the lines of the template so that we're cutting our leather underneath to shape. Take your time with this step because the cleaner the edges come out, the better. And we're going to repeat that same precision cutting with all the shapes in our template. So once you have your leather pieces cut out, you should have a front and back piece as well as two smaller pocket pieces. All right, so here's a breakdown of what the pocket piece is. It's basically just your one large square followed by your oddly shaped square followed by your smallest square. Once all three squares are layered onto each other, you can see that it's just one back piece with two pockets on top. So we're gonna grab some leather glue as well as our oddly shaped piece and add a strip along the edges only. Do not add any glue to the middle of the piece. And then once we have the edges glued, we're gonna lay that piece slightly below the top edge of the square. So traditionally to make wallets, you want to use these hole punching prongs to kind of mark out and create straight and clean stitches. To do this, I'm going to use the two piece prong tool to form a straight line as a guide and then use my six piece prong to hammer in holes along that indent. Once you have your holes punched, you can simply grab a needle and thread and begin threading your way to the end. After that, you can grab a lighter and burn the thread at the end to secure it down. Now that we have our first pocket down, we can add glue to the edges of our smaller piece and glue it on top of that second layer. All right, first half of the wallet is set. Now it's time to cut up our shoe for the other half. And again, you're gonna need a very sharp box cutter to do this. To remove the upper from its sole, you're just gonna punch a hole in with your blade and begin slicing the bottom portion all the way around until it detaches. This part might be a little intimidating to do, but as long as you're using a fresh blade, it should cut through pretty easily. Now that our upper is removed, I'm just going to cut away the toe box panel and use my box cutter to create a slice in the lining. Everything connected to the outside leather needs to be removed, so make sure that anything that is creating extra thickness will get ripped off or stripped away. Alright, our upper has been sliced with all the backing removed. Now we can lay it flat and begin to cut out our front pieces for our wallets. Go ahead and grab your front piece of leather and place it where you'd like on the shoe. Simply use a pencil to trace around the square so we know exactly where to cut. Or you can tape your square to your area and use a box cutter to cut around the shape. Go ahead and repeat this same method for other areas on the shoe so that you get multiple wallets and waste very little leather. And once those are cut out, you'll have some rough drafts of your pieces. You can slice some edges or use scissors to clean up those edges if needed. And one last thing, as you can see, this top portion of my piece is adding more thickness to the backing, so I'm actually going to remove the stitching and slice this away. Now we can grab our last remaining leather square as well as a sneaker piece that we just cut out and apply glue to attach the two pieces together. This is going to be the front of our wallet. Okay, so we have the front and back piece completed. Now we just have to apply glue to the edges of both and attach the two pieces together. Now for stitching, you can use the exact same method that we previously used where you would create holes using a sharp prong. And then since these two pieces are thicker, you can use something called a sewing awl that has a sharper needle at the end for getting through thick leather. This 
method is a bit slower but would definitely get the job done. I personally prefer busting out a sewing machine because it eliminates that need to punch holes and the needle will pass through all layers of the leather very easily. So we're going to be doing a simple stitch, nothing special, so you could literally create the stitch with the machine fresh out of the box or with minimal sewing knowledge. Every machine is different but the main things you want to do before sewing are thread your machine, run the thread through your needle, place your threaded bobbin in place, and thread it using your machine's guidelines. Now we can create that very simple stitch along the edges of the wallet. Be sure to backstitch at the beginning and end of your job to hold the thread in place. That basically means just pressing this handy backstitch button when you start and end your stitch. Sewing is done all the way around. Now the great part about working with all white leather is we can make any color we want with some Angelus paint. I have three wallets, so I'll be painting them in three different colorways. And lastly, be sure to apply some Angelus forecoat to protect and preserve our paint from scratching and scuffing. 